Hi guys, welcome to another video. I am going to be making a geode tumbler. So, I did a couple of steps already that are very simple and I it saves a lot of time for me to do it ahead of time. If you would like to see me do this step on film, I will gladly do so. I'll be honest with you. I got the idea to do this and halfway through said, hmm, maybe I should film it. Maybe somebody will have some interest. So here I am. So anyway, let me explain to you what I've done so far. So this is my contraption. <laughs> this is my professional setup to make a tumbler, as you can see. It is a vise that hooks onto a table that I stole from my husband. Attached to that is a paintbrush roller. Attached to the roller is a pair of my daughter's pants that are wrapped in duct tape. And then I put the cup on there. Now the cup is a stainless steel cup and I did not tape off the lip or the bottom. A lot of people will do that. I did not. This particular cup has a lid, <clears throat> excuse me, a lid that you drink out of. So I decided to do the whole cup. So the first step that I did was I put down a thin layer of epoxy over the entire cup. And while it was wet, I sprinkled different types of glitter. I also used different sizes of glitter. Some were chunky, some were um, very fine. So the, the main three colors I used were green tones, blue tones, and pink tones. And basically, I let that dry for 24 hours. But what I did not do, which you have to do, and this is where the real cup turners come in handy, the real ones, they spin like this. They have a motor and they keep spinning and they help the epoxy coat evenly and not get drips. If you see this area right here, I had a drip. So basically what I had to do was sand it down and then I did another coat of epoxy on top of it. But the main step you have to remember is lightly drizzle some resin over the stainless steel cup with your hand while you're turning it or if you have a real cup turner you won't have to turn it just spread it nice and evenly all over the whole cup even the bottom the bottom is done also it doesn't take much I say an ounce ounce and a half and I covered the entire cup. Then I put the glitter on, turning it while I was sprinkling it, and then let that dry for 24 hours. Once it was dry, I came back, I had to sand that drip, and then I did another layer of epoxy over the entire cup again, except this time I kept turning it by hand for, at first, probably every two minutes I would turn it, let two minutes go by, turn it again, let it sit that si on that side, turn it. I just kept, you know, playing with it until the epoxy started getting really thick. Then I would come in and turn the top cup probably every 10 minutes. I looked online that the cup turners are very easy to make. I guess you just have to buy a rotisserie motor and a couple of pieces of wood. But I just wanted to try this one time to see if I could do it. And so far it's coming out nice except for that one area where I had that drip problem. But anyway, so now it's another 24 hours. So, so far I have a layer of epoxy. While it's wet, I put the glitter on, let it dry, and then I put another layer of epoxy and now it's cured. So the next step is to take it outside and spray paint over the entire thing three different colors. The first color 
you're going to see me spray will be white. Then I will come back and do most likely a turquoise blue. And then the third will be a black. So let me set up outside and I will be right back. Okay, so I'm outside now and I have a pole that I have attached another pair of pants underneath some tape. And that is going to hold my cup on while I spray it with the spray paint. Um, what I did ahead of time here is I just now just sprayed some on the bottom so I don't have to turn it so much okay so I'm going to come over here and hopefully be able to get this on film can't see what I'm doing so you want to hold the can about 12 to 14 inches away from the cup and turn it as you spray it want to try to avoid drips for sure Okay, that should be good. So I'm going to let that dry, and then I'll come back to do the next color. Okay, guys, I'm back. So I forgot to mention the white spray paint I just used was a Walmart brand spray paint. Literally, I think it was 98 cents for the can. Next color I'm going to use is going to be Seaside Color by Rust-Oleum. Okay, and I have this little handy dandy clip on sprayer by Krylon that I got at Michael's, I think, for four bucks. So I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm just going to lightly coat it in this color, holding the can 12 to 14 inches away. Any ripples that you see? Those are the areas I'm going to try to work on to form the geodes. So hopefully you don't see them in the finished area, in the finished product. Um, if this comes out halfway decent, I may invest in one of those cup turners. We'll see. They are a lot of fun to do, I will say that. This time I forgot to paint the bottom, but I'll have to work with it here. All right, so that is coated pretty good. And I'll let that dry and be right back. Okay, so I'm back to do the last color. That is going to be Krylon Metallic Shimmer Black. I read that all backwards. Wow. Shimmer Metallic Black Shimmer. <laughs> so after I spray this coat, I am going to let it dry really good, probably eight hours, even though it doesn't take that long. And then 
I'm going to come back and show you guys where you make the magic. So let me just spray this on quickly. Give it a good shake. And here we go. This is a very pretty color, this black. It's got a nice sparkle to it. We're all done. So I will be back to show you guys how to finish off this cup and make it into a geode. Hey guys, I'm back. I'm going to do the next step for the geode tumbler, which is going to be using a rag and 100% acetone. So basically what you want to do is rub off areas of that black, of the three layers of spray paint that I did earlier to expose the glitter underneath. And you need acetone to do that and some type of a stiff cloth. I'm using an old washcloth from the dollar store. I buy those a lot for, you know, clean up and whatever else I may use them for. Sometimes I buy them for the kids. They're the little square. They come in little packages, little tiny square, and you put them in water and they explode into a washcloth. So that's what I'm using. And I have some 100% pure acetone that I got from a hair supply store. Acetone, they use that to, uh, with fake nails, they use it a lot. So, what I want to do is concentrate on the areas that were a little wavy. Like there were a couple of areas, I had that one drip. There's a couple of lips, a uh, couple of uh, areas around the lip. So I'm going to find my first spot, which is going to be right here. And I'm going to take the acetone. And I'm really going to get this washcloth wet in just one area. Maybe I'll put it in a cup first and dip dip into it. This way it'll be a little easier. I have gloves on. So I'm just going to take the end of the washcloth, wring it out, and then I'm going to take this one glove off because I got acetone on it and I don't want to touch the cup. So right here, we're going to start and you're just going to rub until you get to the bottom there and you see the glitter coming back through. And then you'll notice like the white is smearing onto the cup. We could wipe that away with uh, rubbing alcohol afterwards. 
So you want to put a good amount of pressure. So you'll see now, let me get up and show you. So you have a little geode slice poking out. And now I'm going to try to remove this with the rubbing alcohol. So let me get that out because I forgot to get it out. And I have 70% alcohol. That's all I have. I'm going to use the other side of the towel that doesn't have the acetone on it. And then you're supposed to be able to rub it away. It doesn't look like it's working though, does it? Hmm. That's interesting. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's do this. Let's continue to do our spot. I need some more here. I'll worry about that stain afterwards. So, see how pretty that is? So, I'm going to set this down for a minute and get a different rag so I can have one for each the alcohol and the acetone. Okay, so I'm having a problem getting that off. It's not coming off with the rub, uh, rubbing alcohol like they said they would. So, what I'm going to try to do is somehow. Do the entire cup and have it blend in maybe we'll see i may have to do a little more research but i want to continue on with the plan for now all right so that's it for now guys i will be back when this is dry and ready to go. Okay guys, I want you to totally ignore the mess that is everywhere here and concentrate on that cup in front of you. So this is the last step that needs to be pre performed two to three times on this cup, depending on the finish. So what I'm talking about is putting the last layer of resin on. So what you want to do is lightly coat the cup, let it cure, and then do it again. Let it cure. Check the surface. See if it's nice and smooth. If it's wavy or bumpy and you feel like you need to sand it a little bit and do another coat, do it again. It's all on how the finish comes out. So I'm going to... Start by putting on a thin coat, a thin layer, I mean, right across the top here like so. And I'm going to take my hand, this hand is not gloved, I'm going to spin the little thing while I move this around. Now this is very messy, so just prepare for that. Depending on the type of cup that you have, you may want to, excuse me, I say a hair. You may want to 
tape off the lip area and the bottom area. Some people do that. I have a lid for this one that you drink out of. So I'm not worried about the resin getting on the lip right here. And I'm also using art resin, which is supposedly non-toxic. So hopefully we'll be good. So you just want to smooth it on there nice and keep going until the cup is totally covered. And looking beautiful. Don't forget your bottom if you did the bottom. I keep pushing my cup on because it feels like it's not on there, right? I have put this on and off of this paint roller probably 10 times, so it could be that the pants that are holding it on are a little loose. So now, if you're working with a homemade roller, the most important thing to remember is to come back to this cup every couple of minutes for the first hour and give it a turn to an opposite side. Meaning, say it's been like this for five minutes. You come back, give it a half a turn, and let it sit. This way, you won't get the drips. So I'm putting on a really nice thick layer for this one. And just using my hand to smooth it out. The resin should level and work like it does on a canvas. You know, it levels out. You just want to keep turning it once you're done coating it. What I did was, the, for the first half hour, I literally turned the cup like every two minutes just to be safe. It was probably overkill, but I wanted to be safe. And then after the first half hour, I did like every five, five to ten minutes, and then I went every 15 minutes for like a couple hours after that, and then I let it alone. And there really weren't that many uh, wrinkles. There was just the one spot I had from where the glitter had dripped. All right, so I have a really nice thick coat on here. I probably don't even need the rest of this, but I'm going to do it because I don't want to waste the resin. It's just going to go somewhere that I won't need it, like on one coaster because I don't have enough to make all four. So I'm just going to keep rubbing this on. I bet those cup turners are really, really nice. Another thing you want to pay attention to is the lip. If any gets on the inside, make sure you, you wipe it down. So that there's not a big drip in there. And you know something, I think that the, the uh, paint, I was having the issue before. I think it kind of looks cool. It looks like a stone washed look. I would also look for air bubbles. You really don't torch these, but you can get an air bubble, so you can just work it out with your hands. Okay, and that's it. So I'm gonna let it sit now, 
and I can already see that it's starting to drip towards the bottom so I'm going to turn it. Let it sit and then when I see drips building up underneath move it again. You kind of you really need to babysit it for the first few minutes. I'm just I see some little air bubbles here and there that I'm hitting. Wonder if you can actually torch this. You know what? Let me get my uh, little torch and I'm going to let you know right now if we can torch it or not. So don't forget there was acetone I used rubbing alcohol. So if I blow up, I love you guys. <laughs> so looks like you can torch it. I'm going very quickly over it. Hit the bottom quick. Perfect. All right, guys. So that's where I'm going to leave you. I will bring back tomorrow to show you how it came out. For now, I want to say good night and happy pouring. Hey, guys. My cup is cured, and I just want to show you the finished product. Came out really pretty. Nice glossy finish. I put the lid on. And she is just gorgeous. Absolutely love it. I had a lot of fun doing this. And I most likely will do another. Just turn it to the other side here for you. So it's got that stone wash look. I'm going to um, do another one and try to figure out if it was the metallic paint that made the smudged paint not come off like that. But in the end, I actually like it. I think it looks rustic. I think it looks worn, distressed. So, yep, there it is. She is all done. So I want to thank you for watching another video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And as always, happy pouring.